Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Question today from Sergey Sergey about peak season of tennis equipment. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so Sergey, Sergey, spelled a little differently, S-E-R-G-E-S-U-R-G-E -E -E is his I-G, uh, writes, question, can you explain the seasonality of tennis, the tennis business? Well, I'm in the tennis business, and there are seasons in tennis. That is true. When is demand for equipment higher? Is it true that it goes through the roof after the U.S. Open? Tennis Warehouse is having five to six day delays on strung rackets. So wondering if it's because of that. Love your channel. Well, thank you, Sergey. Yes, there actually is um, seasonality of um, tennis equipment and higher demands in various months and times of the year. Now, it's kind of interesting because most people think that summer is the high season for tennis equipment. At least from my experience, summer is actually not the high season for some reason. You would think that um, with the good weather, uh, people being on vacation, that tennis explodes in the summer. Well, I think it does in certain parts of the world, like vacation spots, like the Hamptons, um, you know, the Nantucket, like people where tennis courts exist with summer camps and clinics and adults playing, um, and you go there exclusively for those things. But I think for the rest of, let's say the United States, um, it actually, explodes or starts to ramp up in March. Like we get super busy from about mid-March through, I wanna say the end of April to early May. Like that is season number one, that everything gets ramped up. Everybody's um, you know, preparing for good weather, preparing for spring camps, um, the boy season, the men's season, the college seasons are within that time frame also. Uh, so everybody seems to be picking up a racket again and playing. Therefore, you know, racket sales go up. We get a lot of stringing. Shoe sales go through the roof. We sell a ton of balls uh, because of the teams are asking for them. And then after May-ish to June, it kind of starts easing down um, until first slam, the French, right? When the French ramps it up a little bit more, but it ramps up even more a little bit, a little bit when Wimbledon hits. So after the first week of Wimbledon, all those people who haven't played in a while are now inspired to play. So it's like, oh man, it's so cool. Everybody's wearing white, the tradition of Wimbledon. And everybody just, oh, I got to at least play now because, you know, it's, it's an English thing, I guess. I don't know, breakfast at Wimbledon, strawberries and cream. You pick up your old racket and you go play, right? So that's, that's a mini peak. It's a mini peak. It's not a full ramp up, okay? Now, for the rest of the summer, it's pretty steady. Not too busy, not too slow, kind of right in that middle range. Um, it ramps up starting actually at the U.S. Open. Um, at, after the first few days, so the first week of the U.S. Open, everything just gets crazy. Uh, people, I don't know, people are going back to school, trying to get into their lives again and planning more tennis because they're back to their normal life after the summer. Therefore, they watch the Open, 
Girl season is in play with the high schools. Colleges are back in and practice is going on again. And everybody's inspired now that they just watched the U.S. Open, obviously. And yes, it blows up then. We sell a ton of rackets. We sell a ton of balls. We can't, we can't keep the shoes in stock. Like this year, for instance, we sold an enormous amount of cases of balls, enormous amount of shoes, a crap load of rackets. Even clothing was going, bags were going. It's September is the craziest month in tennis. And it doesn't slow down until about the second or third week of October or depending upon the weather. Uh, sometimes it actually goes all the way through October, like last year, uh, 2020. It didn't rain much, so we were still crazy. Now, after that, depending upon the weather again, November is pretty steady. Um, and then in December, in December, people go crazy because it's so hard to buy for a tennis player. The number one gift for a tennis player is tennis bag, right? Or gift card or tennis balls. Well, you're not going to get tennis balls this year. So it might be a bag. Better buy that bag now, guys. Okay. And then um, through the holidays, it gets slow after the holidays. And then it slows down until... Australian Open. People now are inspired to play. After the first week, de again, depending upon the weather, um, people will try to pick up their rackets again and try to ramp it up. Now, if there's no rain like there wasn't this year, 2021, they'll just keep playing. <laughs> but if it storms and rain happens and all that, it it's kind of still in the middle ground. I mean, at least for us, because we're in Northern California and it doesn't rain too much, you can pretty much play tennis throughout the rest of the year. But the peaks are in March and in September. So yes, Sergey, September is the most busiest time for equipment sales in the sport of tennis. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.